What's up, everybody? And welcome to Engadget's post-Apple, I don't know, event, fiasco, <laughs> yeah, wrap-up. Uh, I'm Senior Editor Devendra Hardwar. I'm joined with Reviews Editor Sherilyn Lowe here. Hello. Hola. Hello. Hello. And uh, we'll be chatting about everything Apple. And I think it's a pretty exciting day. Um, not sure about you, Sherlyn, so let's just make this clear. <laughs> Sherlyn is the Android queen. Uh, I brought her here. Um, you know, to th it took a lot to drag Sherlyn here to talk about iPhones, but she's here. She's excited. And Android we have queen, the indeed. Android queen. And we have the first 5G iPhones. We have the iPhone 12. And we have a smaller iPhone mini, uh, iPhone 12 mini. And we have the 12 Pro and Pro Max as usual. But there's a lot of stuff, you know, there's so much stuff they announced. And they yeah. started with, uh, let's just like go. Well, to, to, to be clear, to be clear, yeah. let's say we don't have these phones. We, we don't have these phones. Apple we don't have these phones. Them. No, no, no. Uh, but We're yes, not there that were cool. a lot of devices announced today. So we can so do a quick many. recap, right, about about yeah. what was announced. Devendra. And reminder, yeah, reminder, go to Engadget.com, read all yes. the deep posts about this. We're going to have just some conversations here um, yeah. about We've, our general thoughts about all these devices. But yeah, And also, just, obviously, if you have thoughts, leave them in the chat. We're keeping an eye. I want to say hi to everyone that's already gathered here. The familiar names, as always, Mark hey, Dell, Demon, Ryan Sharp. So many of you are here. Uh, so yeah. Now that we've said hi, let's jump to hi. the recap really quick. Hi, and let's say hi to the HomePad, uh, what was it? The HomePod, HomePod. Mini, HomePad, HomePod Mini, which is a super cute, much smaller smart speaker. Um, it is just 99 bucks. It's a small mm. HomePod. And I can't, you know, I, I have, I'm very wary of small speakers because generally the quality right. of the speaker is really dependent on its size. But right. we've also seen a lot of smaller devices, um, you know, like the Echoes. I feel like Amazon's done a good job with the $100 Echoes. Yeah. And which are also circular this year. So the yeah. HomePod looks like a little circle. I, I like it. It looks to me like a, you know, when you open a grapefruit for breakfast, you know, and you're at a hotel or something, you just have you're scooping out grapefruit. That's what it is. So it is making me hungry immediately. It looks kind of uh, cool. I like the display up top. Um, what are your so general hungry. thoughts, Jolyn? So I hungry. so yeah. So the shape. I mean, I'm not surprised, right? Like with Amazon having announced the Echo and the orb orb shape, the the HomePod <laughs> Mini coming out in this shape is not surprising. I think it might make actually for better resonance and better sound. Sure. sure. Uh, I don't know if I have never actually heard a home pot more than like uh, <laughs> this outside of like in the uh -huh. office when we were in an office and testing it with Nate or Chris Velasco. Um, but I have faith that like with the right setup, these things can sound really good because I've been using a nest audio for a while mm -hmm. now and it's great. Um, but yeah, we'd have to hear these things. I, I think the idea of them, you know, being $99 and being able to automatically yeah. stereo pair is really cool, actually, because the Nest Audio is supposedly able to stereo pair as well, which it is not supposedly, it's able to. Mm -hmm. But the, I think the pairing is not auto. And Apple may have found a more seamless way to do it, which is intriguing yeah. to me. It's kind of cool. And um, I mean, let, let's say this is a Siri speaker too. So you'll be able to yeah. ask Siri a lot of commands. But also, it feels like Apple's doing the thing where, um, you know, they're being very coy about other music services right. and to me yeah. that was the biggest issue with the home pod right because it was basically apple music or bust airplay or bust uh screw everybody else you know no bluetooth no pan no spotify no nothing they did say this will work with pandora and amazon music in the coming months mm. uh i would not bet on spotify just because they apple wants to destroy spotify they want apple music <laughs> to be the thing you go to and not spotify um, and to me, that's always been the killer flaw of HomePod, yeah. but I don't know if you have any more thoughts on that, Sherlyn. Like, it, the HomePod sounds good. It's just yeah. so limited connectivity-wise, yeah. and this is just that, but cheaper, you know? I agree, and I still don't have uh, faith in... I mean, I'm not an Apple ecosystem person. That's probably yeah. why, right? Like, the HomeKit stuff, there's a good and thriving ecosystem of accessories on HomeKit that you can use for your smart home. For me, I am in a more open, like, playground when it comes to my smart home stuff, so... Amazon and Google's devices work better for that. Their assistants, in fact, Amazon's actually, I would say the best smart home like assistant there is. Um, and then there's Google stuff for like smart displays and TV connections for me. So yeah, I mean, I think the HomePod mini was more a surprise too because everyone was like, oh wait, huh, they made smart speakers, you know? And, and I think that that was kind of nice in an event where we were all expecting to see mostly iPhones. Mm -hmm, most definitely. I mean, it's a, it's a cute small thing. It's not gonna be a big deal. 
Um, they did announce like something related to the home pods is this new intercom functionality, which I think is kind of cool. So you'll, the idea is you'll have multiples in your home and you can like, you know, talk to your, the one in your kid's bedroom or the one right. that's in the kitchen where, you know, somebody's working. Amazon does similar things with the echoes. There is intercom functionality, but I think the really oh, yeah. cool thing is, um, yeah, Apple did this thing where you can basically pop into your kid's, uh, AirPods. And just say, hey, uh, hey, yeah. Let, stop, yeah, stop. <laughs> the earbuds, yeah. Stop playing your game, stop listening to music. I need you to go do this chore right now. Yeah. So I don't know if that's brilliant or terrifying. I'm sure kids Feels everywhere amazing. will hate it. Yeah. 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 The whole point of putting on headphones is so you don't have to listen to your parents, you know? So I don't, I don't know if this is going to be a great thing for a lot of people. Um, let's move on, though. So that was like the, yeah. the intro to this event. The next thing was Apple laid out its kind of, um, it's vision for 5G and everything, you know, mm -hmm. we kind of know the next iPhones are going to have 5G. So they kind of just set the table here and they invited Hans Vestberg, the CEO of Verizon. And um, yeah, company. full disclosure, our parent full company. Disclosure. But uh, it, I was surprised to see him on the stage and he went there basically to announce that Verizon's nationwide 5G network is going to be rolling out alongside these new iPhones, which... To me, that's big news, and I don't. I'm not going to be a Verizon chill here because I <laughs> I have a lot of issues with how we've rolled out 5G in this country, in general. If you look at the 5G maps, it is basically tiny dots near major cities, right. and even right. within those cities, it's usually like a block or two blocks. Yeah. So Verizon's idea or, Vi or Verizon's announcement of nationwide 5G that could be interesting. It really depends. Here's the thing: we don't know what that means. What it's exactly. not going to be ultra wideband. It is not going to be exactly. the fastest 5G. Um, are they going to do the AT and T thing where you get just a 5G label on no. your phone? Are you going to get actual speed bumps? We don't know. Thoughts, Charlene? Well, we we know some things. Um, nationwide 5G for Verizon. In the past, before today's announcement, yeah. Verizon's 5G was limited to the millimeter wave ultra wideband. And so with this announcement, they're rolling out sub six 5G. Uh, and it's nationwide, which means, yeah, you can get coverage everywhere and it will be low latency and all of that stuff. Um, but it, it basically means that you're going to see a smaller speed boost as opposed to millimeter right, wave right. Um, versus 4G LTE. This so, is more like T Mobile's 5G network, which exactly. is also sub six, yeah. Exactly. So it'll be more like the 25% increase you would see on T-Mobile's network. And you know what? I mean, it's nice. The <laughs> coverage that you were talking about, Dev, where there's just red dots um, on a map, that is still, I think, the case for the millimeter yeah. wave For the ultra-wide ultra band For the yeah. ultra-wide band, which is the more common name for it. And mm -hmm. I, I would love to see Verizon just do spread that out to more places. But you know what? It's it's great. I want, I, I was, I want every ISP to do it, but yeah. I want every ISP to do it. I want it. Uh, but but it's nice to see. It's interesting. It was interesting at first for me to see Verizon take the stage on an Apple event because mm -hmm, I was like, oh, mm -hmm. wait, do all of the iPhones support only millimeter wave five G? But it sounds like they'll do at the very least sub six. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that was interesting. <laughs> And we, uh, where, where they move on to next? Well, let's talk about the actual iPhone 12. Straight on to the iPhones, yeah. iPhone 12, which has a new design. It is a new flatter edge design that to me resembles the iPhone 5. And if you've listened to us on the podcast, you've probably heard me say, I think the iPhone 5 was like the last, and the 5S, <laughs> those were like the last really good looking iPhone right. cases because right. they were so thin and I really love the flat oh, edges. God. So we're, it's back, and those yep. flat edges are basically the giant 5G antenna, which is mm -hmm. every every 5G phone needs a lot of antenna to really capture that signal. So, you know, five you, the flat design is back. These look cool. I really like the dark blue color here. Mm -hmm. um, as we know, they're running the A14 Bionic processor. Yeah. Um, the iPhone 12 has a 6.1-inch display, but I think what's really interesting, too, they kind of saved it for the very end, is... Um, is the iPhone 12 mini, which is a new phone with a yes, 5.4 so inch screen. I believe right? so. Let me double check. I am that sounds about right. It was like near 5.5. Yeah. Um, but this is like a new design for Apple. And it's sort of like, it is a step up from the iPhone That's SE. Mm -hmm. Yep. So it's a step up from the iPhone SE. It is smaller so that it fits in your hand better. And honestly, I'm just very grateful because for years, I've been waiting for the moment I could bring my wife's phone over to to iPhone <laughs> and away from Android because it makes life so incredibly difficult. Um, and generally, Android has been the place where you could actually find some decent 
you know, smaller phones that are still pretty powerful. And Apple's getting there. I think the SE was a big upgrade for them, the SE2, technically. Um, and also, so this is running all the same hardware. So it still has two cameras. It has the A14 Bionic. It has a really good looking screen. It's just smaller. Um, and I feel like that is going to be a big thing for a lot of people because everybody loves small phones. Everybody mm -hmm. loves cute, adorable gadgets. What are, what are your thoughts, Sherlyn, on the 12 versus the 12 mini? So yeah, 12 versus a 12 mini. Um, by the way, our chat is on fire. Everyone's like yeah. really fighting it out, out there. I, I, am I bet, I bet it's 12 mini. I... Like I don't think Apple's prepared for how many people want the 12 mini. <laughs> no, yeah. I like the 12 mini. I think the fight in the in the uh, chat is mostly between Android and Apple fans. But anyhow. Um, Android I, fans, I... you don't need to be here. Don't, don't. Get, you don't need to be here. It's fine. <laughs> don't start this fight. Let's we, move we can on. Talk, we can talk a little bit more. But, <laughs> but yeah, the Apple, the iPhone 12 mini honestly looks really good because it, you know, it also to me effectively kind of displaces the iPhone SE 2020, right? That, that we saw earlier yeah. this year. But not price wise because it is twice the yeah. price. It, it is, is still very expensive. Right. Yeah. So it's still like the SE is still the cheaper special edition. Oh, yeah. It's, that's a budget that. phone. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and then I, I like the size of the 12 mini. I've always not really, you know, wanted to switch to a full iPhone 10 and later phone because they don't have that smaller option for me. I like <laughs> the size of the Pixel 4a, which is like closer to a yes. tiny, compact little thing I can hold in one hand easily. So the mini looks really good. Um, I'm also kind of... I, I was drawn because this the new iPhone 12 series has all mm -hmm. of these new features like the A14 Bionic, which by the way, five nanometer design, holy crap. Like That's I can't hot. wait to see That's what hot. that brings. That is hot. Yeah. <laughs> Sherlyn <laughs> also covers chips for us. So she is the one who really dives into Qualcomm's so tech and yeah. yeah. And and to be like, to be the like, I was just thinking in my head, one of the things I wanted to say on this video, which is <laughs> I've been covering 5G for a while, as well as the nanometer process of chips chipsets. This is your moment. It's finally You're just confluence of of interest. It's finally areas. happening. One thing I want to mention but, about the iPhone yeah. 12 mini, by the way, is that it is it starts at 699, which seems like a good price, but don't forget the iPhone 11 also started at 699. So now the normal, the larger iPhone 12 is actually bumped up by 100 bucks. So now that's starting at 799. So that is kind of they're being kind of tricky about that. But the entry level, I believe the entry level size for both phones is 120 gigabytes, which is nice, mm -hmm. right? Um, a lot of people in the chat are asking about some of the features, like whether there's a fingerprint sensor. Uh, no. some people are, yeah, there's no fingerprint sensor. It doesn't look still like face ID. Yeah. So you it's know. still the big, still the big notch, which I think. Yeah. For a lot of people, that's going to be a problem. Also, on a smaller phone like the Mini, it seems like it's taking up even more space. Like, it just looks less proportional to the size of the screen. And I feel like that's going to be a problem for some people. Uh, the BK dot in our chat mentions that they're an Android user, but has been mostly unimpressed by Android lately. And mm -hmm. I unfortunately share that point of view. <laughs> and we will go into the iPhone wow. 12 Pro in a little bit. But I think as I was watching the event, uh, the Apple event, hearing some of these new features, I like. I had moments of, wow, that's really <laughs> neat. Um, uh, as opposed this this to all follows Sterling wearing, wearing an Apple Watch for like a week and your mind is completely changed. <laughs> that's not now. true. You're that's totally not true. different. I think I'm always so impressed by, I think it's partly grass is greener syndrome where like yeah, I'm always so impressed yeah. by like what Apple's events, they're so polished. They always showcase these new features, but I don't, haven't used them a lot in the real world. So I can't really compare <laughs> what I have to, and then I remember also back in the day when I was on an iPhone, I think I was on iPhone all the way to the iPhone six. And I remember how horrible it was when after two <laughs> years, my phone would just die. It would just be unusable. Right, right. But that was every well, single smartphone. That wasn't just iPhone. Phone, that was, yeah. that was Android phones. phones. That, that was everything. Yeah. A lot of phones do that. It's true. So I don't want to like fully blame iPhones for that. And until at least we found out that Apple was deliberately mm -hmm. slowing down older models yep. based on their battery, but Yep. Anyhow, um, it was very interesting to see some of these new features. One of the things I'm I've stuck to pixels for is the better mm -hmm. camera experience in general. Like I sure. think cameras are better on pixels so far. I saw Apple this at this event mentioned like computational photography, their night mode. They said someone mm -hmm. apparently said it was the best night mode around. I'm like, which person? Tell me who. They um, have more cameras, so that that is kind of yeah. And whereas Google's specialty is really the software, right? And yeah, the computational Google's photography of the software. Is yeah. indeed software. So mm -hmm. so I, I think when we talking when we're talking about the cameras, it provides a nice way to kind of bring in the iPhone 12 Pro, which is really where yeah.
where yeah. a lot of these more advanced features seem for to be sure. In. Can I let me let me just bring up a couple things because yeah. the twelve there's still a lot of interesting things going for it. Uh, Apple says they've developed this new ceramic shield technology. Oh yeah, oh for yeah. The screen, <laughs> which again every year we hear this screen is more powerful than last year's, and you could drop it on cement and it'll be fine. I mm -hmm. don't know if we can fully believe that, but it does sound like it does sound like this is Apple's own technology, whereas. Before they were relying on Gorilla Glass from Corning, which is right. a technology that Apple basically helped push Corning to develop for the first iPhone. So mm -hmm. I'm waiting for specifics here. I'm sure somebody's going to report on how they're making the ceramic shield, but it sounds interesting. I think we all want a phone that won't shatter when you drop yep. it and a phone that doesn't require a case. And one more thing let's talk about cases because they introduced this new yeah. thing um, the reviving yeah. MagSafe, the brand for accessories, for cases, for like wallets that snap to the back of the phones. I guess the phones have magnets now, which oh, is kind of oh. wild. Mm -hmm. It is, it was, I'm sorry to be that person that was like, oh, what? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> you're like, crazy, like a magnet on a phone? Yeah. <laughs> like, no, but also the way they made it seem, like I know some third party um, accessory makers have already yeah. Announced that they're making like card cases or whatever that will be work yeah. will work. Belkin is already stuff. working on cases. Belkin's working on a car mount, which hey, by the way, uh car mounts are really annoying because you either have to like squeeze a phone in with like pressure things or get like a special magnet case that goes onto the car mount. If your phone just has a magnet, it will just slap right onto that case. It's so clean and so nice. Um, it's I'm so really cool. yeah, we're looking at the wallet slip here and everything. I yeah. I love this. I at least when I was going on the subway, it was really nice having a wallet case. Um oh, I can yeah. see so many uses here. Yeah. And also the fact that you can just remove and put something else on, this could make like moment lenses, for example, easier yeah. to install and and then you can swap it out for when you want to go out and put on the the you know, card case or something mm -hmm. instead. And also uh, wireless charging. Like this is going to yeah, be a big deal for wireless charging. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. The whole reason it was even built in the first place is to make it snap onto your wireless charger more easily. Mm -hmm. However, did we hear anything about air power? We didn't like hear about air, air power is dead. I think they they yeah. effectively said air power is dead. They're not so doing that anymore. Tea, right. Cause he mentioned, yeah. Tea. Yeah. On instead the, what yeah. we saw is this cool like travel case where one side you could charge your phone and one side you could charge your Apple watch. I think Apple is basically doubling down on what they did for the Apple watch charger because the Apple watch also has like a little magnetic component to it. So when you put it on the Apple watch charger, it kind of just fits right. in properly. Right. So right. That's a smart thing because I think a wireless charging, there's so many issues with it. So having just a bit of a nudge from a magnet to center things properly, that's going to be a big help. And yeah. all of these accessory features are going to be in the iPhone 12 Pro and Pro Max as well, which are, I don't know, what's so max about them, Shirlin? Uh, they they seem to be really extremely high spec. Uh, I'm keeping an eye also on the uh, on the chat, by the way, which people you know are pointing out that you if you already have a wallet case, you, you're good. But this is more about versatility. Now back to the iPhone 12 Pro Max. Huge, it huge. It's really, really big. 6.7 inch on the larger side of things for the 12 Pro Max and then 12 Pro. And then like the one of the features that they touted was this new raw pro raw mode for pictures and then also Dolby Vision support for video recording. And it's starting to feel like the Pro yeah. series of the iPhones are really not meant for the average consumer anymore. <laughs> like in the past, it you know, name. it was in the name, it, but it yeah. was always in the name, but it's gone way more pro than like yeah. before. It feels as if, I mean, yeah, I don't yeah, yeah. know that I want to spend that extra money to shoot. We were talking with our video team um, mm -hmm. prior to this show going live and they're like video producers and they're also yeah. like, I'm probably not going to use the iPhone Pro. It's, sure, it's sure. not really necessary for most it's people. for I, I think it is for the hardware nerds I, it is interesting to see apple get just super nerdy about material yeah. design and hardware because the iphone 12 pro and pro max first of all they have larger screens 6.1 inches and 6.7 inches now uh than last year's models but yeah they have better cameras still three cameras but better camera sensors right, they right. work harder with the a14 bionic they can shoot and edit dolby vision 4k yeah. or dolby vision video which is you know mm -hmm. hdr yeah. no other no other phone can do that no other platform can do that because typically that's something you shoot on a camera and then you edit it on like an expensive rig somewhere uh, on an editing bay right um so having all that built in 
I'm sure actual professionals may not use it, but I'm thinking of people like Sean Baker, who yeah. did the movie Tangerine and has, you know, was it the Florida Project as well? He has done a lot of shooting on iPhones and mm -hmm. really taking that tech. He showed like Tangerine is a movie that you could do something really, make a movie that looks great with that. And we saw a short video from Apple, um, mm -hmm. just like a cute honeymoon thing. And the video looks good. It was shot on a pro. Was that was that a pro I or was that just iPhone 12? I believe it was a 12 pro. So they were talking yeah. about a lot of the low light and some of the modifications um, yeah. Apple made in that respect. I it looked to good. Take, sorry. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it looked really good. Uh, two things I want to really quickly say. One, mm -hmm. these pictures always look so great. These samples yeah. always look so good, but I always need to test them out in the real world just to get yeah. a sense. I find iPhones have this yellowish greenish tint in general compared to Android cameras. Um, at least pixels. And then yeah. Samsung has a more red and almost green tint as well. And this is true but, for every camera, by the way, because like yeah. Canon cameras look different than Fuji and right. that's how it is for every camera sensor. But yeah, so you're talking about what you're seeing between iPhone and Android and everybody else. Right. And so like, that's my personal mm -hmm. preference that's yeah. keeping me from really enjoying like a, an iPhone photo <laughs> or camera. The other thing I wanted to say, I want to really quickly acknowledge that, hey, we see you in the chat. It is yeah. really a lot going on in there. For those of you who really need uh or like really want your question or just really want to rise above the chat <laughs> and if you have twitter you can always uh you know tweet at either myself or at davindra yeah. uh, i'm at davindra she's at shrill and low i don't think we i don't think we have a producer looking at the chat today so we're just trying to juggle a lot we just braced from the iphone event after writing up our stories and now it's like trying to process all this so bear with us please Sorry. we're definitely we definitely yeah. appreciate that you're here but definitely uh let us know uh keep still so we're just trying we're trying to we're keep trying. um but i see someone asking about mm -hmm. uh two two questions one someone's at, ryan i think is asking about the ram in these phones we i want to say like apple never releases the ram like you have to wait until like the iFixit tear down and then somebody exactly. finds the actual ram modules or they run a benchmark that kind of reveals the hardware right. we don't know i would assume uh just based on having a faster processor that we've got a little more on both the the 12 and the 12 pro but we don't know not but hey double yet. the base storage now with one double the base storage weeks, yeah which is nice uh finally <laughs> And the uh, iPhone 12 Pro starts at 999 still, which is nice. That is, yeah, they're the not like pushing it there. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, Bob Tan or Tan uh, says, no USB-C. Maybe next year we will finally have USB-C on iPhone, which. Yeah. Definitely. That'd be idea. nice. Um, another thing they don't have is headphones in the box, which was funny to see Apple really tout it as like an environmental move because they put somebody on the roof of the Apple spaceship. And it was just like, yeah. we're going to leave you here until you really sell the idea that giving consumers not giving consumers headphones anymore is a good thing. And I, I do agree. I, I think for a lot of folks, these headphones are things you'll probably never use. You probably have older pairs or better pairs of headphones that you will be using with your smartphones instead. So it doesn't make sense for Apple to really be talking about, um, you know, uh, bundle in cheap headphones. Like it doesn't make sense for a lot of people. I, I totally get it. Mm -hmm. I mean, in, I I have a lot of headphones lying around, and I also have my own like <laughs> yeah. wireless earbuds. I see and that's us shift. because we have a lot of but, like we. But we are in privilege, phone. exactly. Yeah. Like we're in a very privileged position. I I understand that if mm -hmm. someone was just buying their phone every two years or so, they mm -hmm. do need that new the new cable. Yeah. So, did they talk about the Beats Flex on the during the stream? Because I was like busy with my post for a while. Yeah, I don't think they actually mentioned the Beats Flex. But Unless we have that news really early on, but yeah. we do have the Beats Flex news. And uh, go, go check out this news and gadget because I feel like the Beats Flex is the new interesting thing from Apple because it, they're wireless around the neck the way the Beats X was. They're $50, $50 mm -hmm. with 12 right. hours of battery right. life. Yeah. I'm really interested to see what these things sound like because that's a great deal for Beats headphones, mm -hmm. especially wireless ones. Uh, we got a question about, because we said that there was no fingerprint sensor, someone mm -hmm. asked, what is what then is that thing below the power button on the iPhone 12 Pro and Don't perhaps know. also the iPhone 12? I'm looking at the diagram mm -hmm. uh, on uh, Apple's website now. The and edges like have more room for the antenna. So a lot right. of that could be open space for the antenna to actually receive signals, but we don't, yeah. But one of the things that is on here looks like the shape of an a sim ejector tray, yeah. uh, or a sim tray. It could be that it probably it might not be. Uh, if they're fully eSIM, I'm not sure. 
They would have definitely uh, mentioned the fingerprint sensor. Like they wouldn't keep that a secret. They would be like, we brought back touch ID because masks. Um, Because masks. And uh, man, I, I'm not a fan of the notches still. I feel like we've been doing the notches for a while since the iPhone 10. And back then it was fine because every Android company, like that's how they were producing full screen phones is to have a Mm -hmm. tiny notch at the top. Now we have phones. Sherlyn, you've seen them. You've seen all the pinhole cameras. You've seen so much cool Android tech to like give you a full size screen. It feels a little archaic for the iPhone at this point, um, especially for the Pro series. What is that? It's, this is the 4A, and yeah, it's got the that 4 a yeah, yeah little camera thing. Um, we got. I mean, I, I like the look. Mm-hmm. It's really nice. I I want to we we got. I want to keep answering questions. Sure, sure, sure. go for it. As we can. Mark Dell asks, "How are you both feeling about the event in general? Was this what you were hoping for? Were you excited or surprised by anything? And was there that something that you hoped for that wasn't shown?" It's a four part question, Mark. Very <laughs> Very good at stacking. Very good, very good. Um, Seems like a good event. Uh, I feel like I really prefer this to the old Apple song and dance, like on the stage with everything. And right. I've been getting really tired of the big tech, you know, release day events because we don't need them. And not everybody is Steve Jobs. It was really cool to see <laughs> Steve Jobs up on stage talking about his stuff, but it's not that exciting for a lot of folks. So I actually think even though we're all kind of locked down and we can't do all this these big social gatherings anymore, I do prefer companies going this route for event news because it's more streamlined. It's less, it feels like it's less of a, you know, reveling in the excesses of capitalism type thing where it's just like, (laughs) look at our cool stuff. Everybody come here and worship our phone. You don't really have to do that. You just see Apple put on a show on stage. So I like that it was like a tight show. No Mm -hmm. real surprises. I'd say like we kind of knew the leaks kind of had all the stuff out there. I think we even knew the mini was coming, right? So, yeah, so, yeah, yeah, so the leaks did lay it all out, but some of the features were very exciting for me. I yeah. personally was excited for things like, holy crap, League of Legends. Like, okay, we knew League of Legends in a while. <laughs> yeah. I am a League player. Like, let's be honest, I'm a player League. You know, I main Ash. Um, <laughs> and I was excited to see it finally coming to, well, it was been available in a beta mode for some mobile devices mm-hmm. in some countries already. But, like, for, for it to get kind of its moment on this event, was exciting for me just personally yeah. and even though i think touch controls are going to be very weird for a game like league uh i would love to try that's one of the reasons i would be uh trying to get one of the iphone 12s mm-hmm. um so that's that's that and the mag save and I, I i wrote down a note in our uh show notes to something that got me super so excited that i wrote <laughs> uh oh it was mag <laughs> So I was very was excited. Safe, yeah, I think MagSafe just looks, that is probably going to be kind of one of the killer features that everybody really likes because phone accessories, yeah. they're not great. Putting on putting on cases kind of stinks and they also yeah. kind of mess with your wireless charging too. So for Apple to kind of fix that and also make wireless charging more compelling and honestly give you more of a reason to spend like 30, 50 bucks every couple months for something new in your phone, like that's a good thing for Apple. But yeah good for consumers if this stuff is easier to use too so yeah. i'm yeah i'm really digging that uh Sherlyn, personal choice like are you gonna go 12 iphone 12 mini pro what's up either mini or 12 i can't decide uh-huh. between the two mini might be too small actually i don't know i have to see it in person yeah yeah another, I mean, I miss- another, go ahead mm-hmm. we got another miss- good question but go mm-hmm. ahead first go ahead first i miss the days when phones were powerful and small that's the thing like I think pre iPhone, we were looking at like Sony Ericsson's. We were looking at like the Nokia's that were like cool feature phones with like cute little displays, but they were more and more powerful. And their goal was to get smaller because smaller was more convenient for most people. And I feel like maybe we'll get back there, but go ahead. Maybe we're seeing a throwback to that. Now we have a good question from Darshan Dedia, I think. Uh, What is LiDAR? (laughs) What is LiDAR? LiDAR is. That is the thing that's in the iPhone 12 Pro and Pro Max. And it's a, it's basically a 3D spatial sensor. So similar to radar, uh, except it is kind of localized. So LiDAR is a thing. If you hold it up, you can hold the sensor up. It'll map like everything in your space. So if I hold it up right now, it'll see my monitor, my desk, my keyboard and everything. That'll be really useful for augmented reality apps. So things like you know the IKEA apps and stuff, like it'll be better for putting those virtual objects in your actual space. We don't know what else people are going to do with it. Apple said that, um, you know, it'll help with low light performance at night too. So I'm hoping there's more practical uses like that um, because I don't think Apple should just leave it up to developers to kind of make this new feature interesting. Um, 
it's cool. I, I would have probably liked to see an actual other camera sensor in there just because what are what are Android phones doing now, Sherlyn? We're seeing like what, five, six cameras on something? <laughs> yeah. Damn, come on, five, six yeah. cameras. That's a lot. We're seeing a lot of cameras. We know we, we I think we capped it more or less at about four now. Four. We did mm -hmm. have seen more than that, but I've but seen more. Yeah. People are sort of settling around three or four mm -hmm. uh in the Android space, which is, you know, it's sometimes helpful, right? I think a lot of people are comparing in the chat the iPhone 12 Pro to the Note 20 Ultra, mm -hmm. uh, which I have here somewhere. Anyway, uh <laughs> Sherlyn has so many devices, she does not know where her Note Pro Ultra is. Come on. Behind me in this little hidey hole. Anyway, yeah. um, the Note 20 Ultra, I think, probably won't do as well as the iPhone 12 Pro in terms of photography. Like, it does mm -hmm. look like Apple has paid a lot of attention to improving sure. its cameras. I really think those that will be a big difference. But yeah. the Note 20 Ultra, some of the people in the chat are pointing out, has a 120Hz refresh rate screen, which Apple has not I, mentioned. Mm, I was really sad not yeah, to see yeah. that talked about here because I want a high refresh rate screen. Every time you see one, you will get spoils for every other device. So yeah, that is a little annoying. We're currently at the point where like the it's going to be really old if you stick to a 60 hertz screen now, right? Yeah. Even cheaper Android phones, like the Pixel 5 was already 90 hertz. The OnePlus Nord was already 90 hertz. So yeah. that's this is kind just, of- Just give me 90, Apple, give me 90. You don't have to go all the way to 120, but give it, give us something. Something I will say, uh, it, I'm looking at the specs sheet uh, for the mm -hmm. iPhone 12 Pros now, and uh, it's a 2 million to 1 contrast ratio with, okay. com compared to the Pixel 5 million to 1 contrast <laughs> ratio. So yeah. <laughs> there yeah. you go. There's that. Uh, and also Super the XDR the, Retina display, right? Whatever Apple calls its tech. Yeah, Retina XDR, mm -hmm. and, uh, which like some kind of HDR support. Uh, yeah. And they're OLEDs, which is, you know, we've, we've liked. Hey, them, you know. good. Yeah. Did they confirm OLED for iPhone 12? Because that was part of the rumor mill too. So OLED is 12 Pro. Let me just double just check. Just Pro? Yeah. Uh, itself. Let me so see. we were like jumping through all our specs here too as it we're not look talking like about the 12 this. is OLED. The 12 Pro I know is. Yeah. That was always the thing of the Pro line. There was one rumor saying all the iPhones would be getting OLED, but hey, maybe right. not. Uh, one someone in the mm -hmm. chat, uh, Solomon Weiser, I think, uh, said 5G antenna. I think that was when we were talking about what might mm -hmm. be on the edge of these yes. phones, possibly, yeah. most likely too. Uh, IG Zero asks if we are satisfied with this year's upgrade from the 11. Dev, you're an iPhone user, are you? I'm an iPhone user. I have an 11 Pro right now. Um, I don't like the Max. It's way too big, um, and also. So this year, the 11 Pro Max was already half a pound. I. I can only imagine. I don't know if you could yeah. pull up that weight spec, Sherlyn, but I got it. I am not looking forward to how heavy the 12 Pro mm -hmm. Max is. Um, for me, I think um, you know the processor stuff is good. Here's the thing: I have a two-year-old, so my goal is to always take the best pictures of my child as possible. So that is why I upgrade is just for every I successive it. new. I camera yeah i sent troll in photos and i sneak them into my reviews if you go look at our surface laptop go review today you'll see one um i like good camera tech because you need a fast camera you need fast processors to really capture kids moving quickly so that's why yeah. i'll be upgrading i would have liked to see a faster refresh rate for sure um i kind of like the new mac safe stuff i actually am a 5g subscriber now on verizon because um I moved over to our employee plan, which is just makes life a lot easier. But yeah. 5G speeds, actually being able to use 5G speeds is something that's interesting to me. But I don't think for most people, that's going to be important. I don't think 5G is a huge draw in America. There's been yeah. a lot of like commentary that 5G in China and Asian countries, like, yeah, that's kind of yeah. where you want to be because Apple needs to have devices that can compete with all the 5G Android phones. And it mm -hmm. doesn't make sense to just have 5G there and not 5G here. So that's kind of where we are. 5G is going to be a bigger deal in America next year and certainly mm -hmm. Europe too. Mm -hmm. I want to quickly confirm for you that indeed the iPhone 12 Pro Max is a half a pound. It's eight still point, a half a pound. Okay. 8.03 ounces, whereas the iPhone 12 Pro, not the Max, is 6.66 mm -hmm. ounces. So kind okay. of obviously lighter. That's one of the reasons too that I haven't actually switched over to an iPhone because mm -hmm. the ones I have used for review are heavy, heavy compared to the pixels that so I use. So heavy. Uh, to be mm -hmm. fair, the Samsung phones are also very heavy. So oh, yes. Uh, weight is an important factor for me mm -hmm. that other people. 
might not. I think you're going to go 12 mini, Sherlyn. I am. I'm betting on it. Um, people are talking about like which uh, should you get a phone this year in the chat or wait till next year. I mm -hmm. do feel like next year is going to be a bigger redesign just based on okay. what we've seen so far. Like maybe that's where Apple will give us the pinhole front camera or something. Um, but I will say this, um, I've been doing the iPhone upgrade program for the past year, which is the thing mm -hmm. where you pay a monthly fee, um, you get Apple care and stuff with it too, but you right. can upgrade, you know, while paying the same fee, uh, the next year. And I've been doing that. I've been happy with it rather than mm -hmm. giving that money to a carrier because mm -hmm. now once these pre-orders open up, I could just like go to the Apple store, do this change really quickly. And mm -hmm. I'm not like spending money to, you know, replace this phone really. I'm just still sticking with the same monthly uh, fee. So that may not be great for everybody. They announced some deals with Verizon. Uh, you know, you don't, if you have an iPhone 11 or an 11 Pro, you don't need to upgrade. And that's true for a lot of phones, right? Yeah. So two things really quickly. Mm -hmm. One, uh, Loco Payaso rightly points out that the iPhone 12 has an OLED screen. Look at the website. I was looking at the press release, which yes. thank, we could th thank, you, thank you, Apple, for not thank including you. OLEDs in your press release. But yes, the iPhone, uh, the Apple website tech specs for the iPhone 12 and 12 mini does mention that they do have all screen OLEDs. So the rumors right. were true. There we go. They did and, not say that during the uh, during the actual right, presentation, which is, which is I weird. All that out. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then... Luthil Halik, I think, asks mm -hmm. if I think the iPhone 12 lineup will drop signal coverage like it happened back during the iPhone 4 and antenna gate. They're he, they're worried because mm -hmm. you know it's implemented on the sides again. It looks like with the antenna bends. We don't know. Middle way 5G is really tricky, but because Verizon launched the sub six nationwide 5G, that's easier and propagate the the bands propagate further mm -hmm. and through more things. It might be. Yeah. Less the of an issue thing was a weird thing where I don't think Apple fully tested like how people actually held their phones or the potential antenna weaknesses. The thing we learned from antenna gate is that every phone, if you hold them in a certain way, you can block the antennas. So I hope Apple learned from that. And, you know, they gave out the stupid rubber bumpers, you know, when that happened and they eventually had to apologize for telling people they were holding it wrong. So I hope Apple learned, you know, that's all I can hope for. I know, I know. Mm -hmm. uh, the the chat is thankfully less crowded uh, or or you know nuts right now, mm -hmm. but we do have. A and lot they of say oh, mentioned the event, so that's good. Uh, just so you guys know, as we're watching these events, we are also taking notes and doing a bunch of stuff. So it's really hard right. to like keep track of every single thing, but that's good. That's good to hear. Uh, I am just doing a quick time check to see how much time. Mm -hmm. uh, we have left to talk to you guys, but yeah, someone was, someone's asking when wild rift is coming out or some people are asking, would you even game on these phones, bruh? Uh, um, I mean, yeah. Have you, have you tried Apple arcade, bruh? Like Apple arcade, I think is, I wrote about this when Apple arcade launched, but it was a really good deal back then. And I think mm -hmm. to me, that's still the best way to play mobile games just because I don't, I hate the thing where I'm spending five to $10 on a new game and I don't know if I'm going to keep playing it, you know, whereas Apple Arcade is like, it's a monthly fee, you get games and they're really good, interesting games. Um, and that's it. You know, you don't have to go beyond that or deal with microtransactions or anything. So I think for gaming, they're still going to be good. They're still going to be fun and interesting. Um, League of Legends is certainly going to be a big hit, right, Sherlyn? I'm sure you're I happy. mean, I would love yeah. to. Um, the, the I jinxed it. I said the, the chat calmed down a bit and it just went nuts again. So yeah. I... Y'all, there's, yes. Send us your thing. I mean, listen, what else is there to say? <laughs> These are new iPhones. They're faster. They have better screens. The cameras yeah. are slightly better. I would have liked to see like a big surprise, like a big reveal. And they kind of, they did like this weird get smart sketch for uh, for the iPhone 12 mini, which is okay. <laughs> That's kind of cute. Um, and I think it's nice to see something different in the lineup. But man, yeah, I'm disappointed by oh. no refresh rates changes. Yeah. I yeah, I'm with you. I am intrigued mm -hmm. to see, and I, I forgot to mention this when I talked about the iPhone 12 Pro's cameras, but sensor shift. Mm -hmm. I liked how, you know, Apple, one thing it does well is to kind of explain some of these behind the scenes tech things. Mm -hmm. And sensor shift is technology instead of borrowed from DSLRs to like, you know, shift the sensor for OIS instead of the lens itself, which can be heavier. That was nice to see. I would love to sure. see the effect and the result. But I have a feeling the iPhone 12 Pro's cameras are actually going to be noticeably better 
uh, than before and even mm-hmm. might even make me consider switching for real, for real. <laughs> I think I think for you, given everything you do and you take a lot of photos and Sherlin's Instagram is just a lot of a lot of Sherlin selfies. Um, more cameras, more camera tech would be good for <laughs> Sherlin. I think for anybody who wants the highest tech stuff and yeah. investing in a pro kind of there, there's a lot of cool stuff there, but it's not as necessary as maybe it was last year for some folks. So, hey, the iPhone 12 looks good. The iPhone 12 mini looks pretty fantastic. Yeah. Um, and no real surprises from Apple this year. We have 5G and 5G is ca- just kind of like here. But And it's every company too, right? Yeah. Every company has a phone. I mean, Samsung has been a little bit ahead of some people, but with the S20 yeah. also, it just was like 5G th- across the line. Yep. Google also was like 4G, 5G and Pixel 5 with 5G. And now we've got Apple going all in. So, mm-hmm. Again, they they mentioned some speeds, by the way. So what was it? Sorry. Four gigabit per second ideal, like in an ideal setting, but also one gigabit per second 5G realistically. So that's, I assume, with ultra wide band to get that speed. So that is pretty hot. You know, I was very excited when I moved uh, down here. I'm right outside of Atlanta now. And I got gigabit fiber internet to my house. But to have the, the to, to think that you could have it right to your phone, that's certainly exciting. Um, I feel like these devices will be good long-term investments where you may not use the 5G much this year, but in the next couple of years, it could be a good thing. Or, you know, don't upgrade, just wait, save your money and um, keep an eye on like what's coming. Um, we'll certainly be talking about a lot of this on the iPhone, um, our iPhone episode for the Engadget podcast. So we record that live. Thursday morning uh, around 10 a.m. Eastern. So you can join us for more of this. Um, Maybe we could bring our phone guru, Chris Velasco, in to chat about it. Um, Any other thoughts, Sherlyn? Anything else from the chat? Um, there's, there's, there's a a lot (laughs) of chat going on. Uh, You could just stay here and just like repeat this video. Just have fun. Yeah. Um, but there, if there's anything you want to ask us specifically, because now it seems like you all are answering each other's questions, which like I love. Thank you for being very educated folks. And but you know, keep it civil. Uh, but yeah, if you have any last minute questions for us, throw it in there right now. Uh, but yeah, I think we're gonna wrap because we have a crap load of work to do. We have so much and more also, to do. Yeah. Yeah, and make sure to come back, like Devendra said, Thursday morning, 10 a.m. Eastern, back on this YouTube channel that you're here on right now. Mark your calendars. Devendra and I will be back to talk more about this after we've had some time to digest the information, sure. dig up some of the fine print stuff, talk to so Apple. To find out Having more. time to think, first of all, like we're messy right now because we literally we ran away from our post for this event. So I have not had time to digest it. We're just rattling off the specs we just heard. That's why we missed something. So dealing with multiple other deadlines. So many, so many things yeah. happening. But I will say, um, if you uh, are, if you like our banter, by the way, go check out the Engadget podcast episode we did last week with special guest Bill and I, who oh is God. very angry, very angry about climate change and very angry about our anti-science yes. world. So that was a lot of fun. Be sure to check that out. And yeah, all Wherever our stuff. Wherever you can get podcasts, yes, definitely. Wherever look you for get that. podcasts, yeah. And check out Engadget.com for more of our iPhone and Apple news. We're going to, like, stuff is still coming. We have posts coming up today, including comparison posts, where you can really see how the specs compare to other types of devices. And I'm sure we'll have some follow-ups, too. I'm kind of, like, churning on some ideas with uh, the MagSafe stuff because I feel like that's pretty cool. It's kind of a cool, practical upgrade for a lot of users. So, yeah, look out for more stuff like that. Anything else, Sherlyn? I, th- I think that's it. It's going Where can we wild. find you on the internet, Sherlyn? If y'all have any more thoughts to send my way, you can hit me up on Twitter at Sherlyn Lowe, which is my first and last name. Devendra, you. I'm at Devendra on Twitter. I also do a movie podcast. And yeah, check us out on the Engadget podcast because we are always, we're so excited to get here and chat with y'all. And the people who come to chat, like you can ask us questions live. We do Q&A sections too. So that's always fun. Um, but yeah, looking forward to testing out some of these devices yeah, happy iPhone day, yeah. everybody. Thank you so much and, for joining us. Yeah, and, and one last one last confirmation. One last yes, we were talking about the Bill Nye the Science Guy. Yes, we were talking about Bill Nye the Science Guy. So you can just search that episode for the Engadget podcast. So last week's um, episode, if you subscribe to the podcast, you will see it. It is the someone most recent was just episode. trying to confirm if we meant Bill Nye the Science Guy or Bill Nye someone else. You know what I mean? So there's only know. one Bill Nye. In fact, his theme song is Bill, Bill, Bill. Nye Bill. The, science guy. the only and Bill. Now. Yeah. All right. Thank um, you, folks. Thanks, guys. It's been fun. See you next time. Yeah.